not Duke, uh, why didn't you guys receive the first place votes in the preseason All-ACC? Why did we? Um, we received a lot of first place votes. We weren't picked first. You know, I think if you look at the Coastal Division, I told some guys this, you can really do a real serious one through seven. And then for fun, right on another piece of paper, flip it. Make seven one and go right back down. It would be interesting to see which one was the most accurate. So I, I think that as I look at preseason votes, you know who I'm happy for are former players. Because I think it's meaningless to this team. 2014 is going to prove itself. But I think the significance is all of these young men that have come through there since we've been there, they've played such a big role in every year in getting better and working as hard. So I know in my heart how proud those guys are uh, of the fact that they helped move this to the point where we could be picked second. You're kidding. You know? The only difference last year, I told people, is being in a 12 team league is in a 14 league, we were picked seventh instead of sixth. Uh, you know, <laughs> now we've got to handle a different role. But again, I think I'm happy because of our former players. Back over near the light tower on this side. Oh, close to the way. Hey, Coach Jeff, WRL and Ronald. As a matter of fact, 13 out of the last 14 years, Duke has been picked last in the preseason. Preseason polls, is that not an indication of how your program is perceived and respected? Yeah, I think, and that's why I'm saying I'm happy for our former players. I think certainly, uh, you know, if I were a young prospect, I'm going to be affected by that. So I'm not going to ignore it. I'm not going to say I'm upset about it. I like the fact that our guys have earned that opportunity. But the ones, again, that it's most meaningless to is not prospects, not just the actual players of the 2014 team, because it's, it's no different than a year ago when we were picked seventh. You know, people say, well, you had something to prove. Well, anger lasts in that regard about five minutes. And then you got to go play football. Um, so it, it's a matter of being the best you can be every day. And I think that's what this 2014 team has to do to be successful. Coach to our right, towards the back. Hi, Coach. Morgan Ammons from Time Our Cable Sports Channel. I just want to know what are your thoughts about facing Syracuse this season? Well, I've been to the Carrier Dome before. There's nothing easy about playing in the Dome. It's a challenge. Um, I think they've done a terrific job of trying to establish their program. They're a great uh, new member of the ACC. It's going to be different for our players. We're going to be up there when it's a little colder outside. And so the thing is to try, when you take a team on a longer trip and a new trip, even when you have veterans, how do you circle them in and get them to focus and play? So it will certainly be a very challenging game. And everybody's a little different as a team in November. Hard to say who's going to match up where now because injuries and other things occur, uh, but it's certainly going to be a, a great trip for our players. And I know one first-hand uh, experience is going to be a difficult challenge. Left side, Coach. Hey, Coach, been an explosion of kick return touchdowns. Your team has been a part of it. 16 last year, 10 months, six kickoffs. You know, your guys had four, I believe. More and more in this league, you have to be careful who you kick to. Well, I know we are. Uh, location, location, location. And I'm not talking about a restaurant. <laughs> um, your kickoffs and punts better be put in good spots. One of the things that I, I tell uh, people and I tell our return men this. In the kickoff game, particularly, the ball goes into the end zone. We get a 25-yard line spot. For an old boy that started at the 20 when that happened, that's, that's a feast. Um, when the timing of a kickoff is lengthened, which is what a kick at the end zone will do, if you're coming out with it, blocks don't time, people are in different levels, it's more difficult, and you watch how many people are tackled inside the 25-yard line. So I think if a good return man picks and chooses his opportunities, and if you take those kicks that aren't exactly what the opponent wanted to have happen, and you do a great job of practicing those and the timing of those kicks, you got a chance to be successful because it's an open field play. And that's how we do it. We try to pick our opportunities well, 
and put them to, put them to use. And so if that makes sense at all. And I think that changed the kickoff game a little bit because of the 25-yard line spot. Coach, right here in the front of the tackle. Coach, Dan Starr, Dan Starr Broadcast Media. You talked about the players that are gone. Now seeing those rankings are a positive thing for them, but your leaders moving forward that can up, you know, withhold that second or even get to first, what can you say about the leaders on the team right now? Well, like our seniors, we've got a lot of people that have played a lot of football. We had two fine young men here that represented a bunch of other fine young men, Kelby Brown and Lake and Tomlinson. From everything I hear from everyone did a great job. That doesn't surprise me. Uh, they represent Anthony Boone and Kobe Cofield and Jordan DeWalt. We have a lot, a lot of good football players in this class. Jamison Crowder, uh, Braxton Beaver. Uh, I'm, I'm certain that they are doing, in their minds, everything in their power. We're not with them preparing in the summers, uh, but they're doing everything in their power to get themselves to be ready to have the best season they've ever had. Big challenge is each year is for seniors to help young people handle that adversity because you don't get it in football. And I thought our 2013 team handled adversity maybe better than any team I've ever been around because of peer leadership. So that's a challenge to the 2014 seniors. Let's see what you got. Close to our last second row. Coach, Barn Burner was pick last year. And heading up to Heinz Field this year, your thought on the pit program and, and what are you expecting when you go to Heinz Field this fall? Well, the, the first thing I would tell you on the, uh, the pit program is physical, character, tough. Um, they, they certainly proved to be all of that. I have great respect for Coach Chris and his staff. Um, I have not coached in Heinz Field. Scotty Montgomery has coached there a lot with the Steelers. So he'll kind of be our front man on what, what to expect. An incredible game a year ago. They kept thinking they had it won, and we fought back. Um, I would rather try the other way if I could. But, uh, you know, it's it's one of those, again, coastal division matchups that, uh, that they've got this, this thing about bringing your A game. You better bring your A game. We're going to have to bring our A game up there on the road. And again, it's, it's a November matchup, so it could be interesting. So uh, I look forward to the trip, look forward to the challenge, and uh, again, we'll both be different teams then than we are now to start with. Coach Tora, right, right here. Hey, Coach Mark with ABC 11 back in Raleigh. Uh, you lose a ton of touchdowns, obviously, with Brandon transferring west and red zone efficiency. Do you have the guys that can fill that void that you can run the same packages? You know, when you look at Brandon's beginnings in that role it was as a true freshman uh, coming in for Sean Renfrey in those settings and uh, he did it extremely well. I think we have people, I think we've got a competitive situation uh, in that circumstance with Thomas Serp, Parker Bain, and even Nico Pierre. All young players, none of them have experience. Um, they're going to get that opportunity in August. I think it'll be an important part of our team. I'm anxious to see who's going to be successful. There's a lot of skill and talent in that threesome. So it should be a fun thing to see them at all. Um, we're, we're going to do it. And obviously, Anthony's a very experienced quarterback. But we're, we're going to go into game one with somebody or more than one in some of those packages because I'm a big believer in that. Coach left side here. Mandy with WRA on Raleigh, Coach. Just you say that your team has a different role this year and you pick second instead of last. What do you tell your players about that and that new mentality? Be true to what we do. You don't have to change anything. The biggest danger is in changing who we've been. We are a good program because we have great habits. What we want to have done is a great program with great habits. We're still a work in progress. And I hope and believe our leaders understand that. I'm kind of watching our young people that have known nothing but success. We've got guys going into their third and second year to think this is just what you do here every year. And I'm anxious to see if that's a good thing or if it's something we're going to have to challenge them with. But uh, I think being true to our habits, being true to what, what we believe in helps you uh, become a champion. And we've got to maintain those same habits.
Coach Rice side. Coach Jim Connors from Tom Warner Cable News. Um, the win total last year obviously was outstanding. But even in some of those wins, particularly in conference games, some key stats didn't favor you, turnovers did favor you. Do you analyze that and look at your guys and say, the win total says we we're really good, but some of these other things say we still have more work to do? No question. Just as we did when we were three and nine, and we didn't punch a panic button, we looked at all the things we were doing well, which was many, believe it or not. Um, and then we looked at the things we weren't doing as well. I think you have to disregard record every year when you study yourself in that regard, or you're kidding yourself. Uh, there are a lot of things that we think win football games that we measure all of the time. But we, we teach we teach winning and everything we do. We teach it as a value and how you carry yourself. And you got to win off the field, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, Jim, I, I think that um, that's what our program is getting stronger. Uh, I really do. I think that, that, that they're challenging themselves to win at all of those marks. And I, and I hope and believe this team has the experience, the mentality, and the ability to do some of that. Coach Cutcliffe, thank you.